morning. Lord, been good to anybody this morning. As you look back over your life and see how the Lord has kept you, how the Lord has blessed you, how the Lord has made a way out of no way, how the Lord has healed your body. Come on, I just need two or three people who can think on the goodness of Jesus and all that God has done for you. I don't know about you, but I am excited this morning because when I look back over my life and I consider all of the things God has done for me, he didn't have to do it despite of my shortcomings, of my mistakes he didn't have to do it but I'm so glad that he did is that your praise this morning is that your testimony this morning if you're on Facebook or YouTube or Instagram go ahead and put your hearts up put your likes up we've come to celebrate our God hallelujah I need some excited people this morning who can say God I've come to magnify you I've come to bless you I've come to lift you up I've come to exalt you because you've been just that good hallelujah we serve a great God and greatly to be praised amen amen let us pray our prayer of invocation this morning will you please stand in reverence of, of God and if you can all over the building will you please stand this morning as we enter into worship amen amen let us pray our prayer of invocation gracious God we love you we thank you for this day, oh God, and how you have allowed us to assemble here collectively, God, to give your name the glory and the honor because you are so deserving, God. We ask now, God, that you would continue to be in this service, God. Let your presence reign supreme and move from heart to heart, God, and have your way in this service, God. We come with our individual problems and circumstance, but we know that you're able to heal, deliver, and set free. God, whatever state we find ourselves in, God, we know that you're able to do just what you said so God let there be a song let there be a word let there be something in this service and this worship experience that inspires us to run on a little while longer to see what the end is gonna be touch now God and let your spirit move in this place we adore you we worship you and we praise your name because you are the only living God and God we love you and we bless you it's in the wonderful magnificent marvelous name of Jesus Christ that we do pray and all of God's people said amen amen let us join in worship with our choir this morning amen come on let us give thanks to the Lord for he is worthy he deserves all the honor. He deserves all the glory. He deserves every bit of praise that you can give him. Because he's been an awesome God. He's been a loving God. He's been a true God. A worthy God. And we want to bless his name on today. Did you come to lift him up? Did you come to make him? Hallelujah.
unto the Lord, for he is good. of worship just to magnify his name, to glorify him, that he might refresh you, that he might restore you, that he might lift you up out of your burden situation. He's just an awesome God, and I don't know anybody that can do what he do and how he do it. So today I just declare that I ask the Lord that he come in and throw his weight around, change the atmosphere, lift up the hung down heads, help the heavy burden, lift up Fill him, fill him, Jesus. Fill him and restore. Fill him and restore. That's what I asked the Lord to do for today. That he restore you. That he will purge you. That he will help you. That he will lift you up. That he will bless your name. That he will keep you. That he will do everything that you need him to do today. Today is the day.
Hallelujah. I feel this one in my spirit. I really love the Lord. I really love the Lord. You don't know what he's done for me. the victory. some praise. If you truly love him, give him the praise that he deserves. Give him the praise that he deserves with the clapping of your hands, the fruits of your lips. If he's been that good to you, come on and magnify his name. 
Come on and exalt him. Come on, shift the atmosphere so the man of God can come in and give the word of life. Come on and shift the atmosphere so something can change in your life. Come on and shift the atmosphere that he will work on you and do what needs to be done, that he get his glory. Hallelujah. Oh, how we bless the Lord today. How we give God glory, honor, and praise for all that the Lord has done. I declare that when you think of the goodness of the Lord and all that the Lord has done for you, there is no other choice but to rejoice and declare that I am thankful to be in the house of the Lord, to be in the presence of God one more time. For God's goodness continues to exceed all of my expectations. That when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that the Lord has done for me, I have have no other choice but to cry out hallelujah glory unto God for God's goodness is in this place I understand the majesty of God in the sense that God didn't have to do it but I'm so glad that he did I'm grateful for the mercy of God that looked past every one of my faults and saw my needs. I'm grateful for the love of God that moved me past my own mess and my own mayhem. I am thankful each and every day for the goodness of God. For when I take a step, God is right there with me. There are some people in this place I can declare that if you just think about everything the Lord has done, there's no other choice but to rejoice in the Lord. Can I get a few of y'all? just to rejoice with me and say, I am thankful for everything the Lord has done. Maybe that doesn't get you. Maybe this will. This is the day that the Lord has made and we have come to rejoice and be glad in it that we enter into these courts with thanksgiving and we come into this place with praise. Thankful unto God for the Lord is good. I declare the Lord is good. I declare the Lord is good. God's mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Put your hands together for 15 seconds and just thank God for everything that the Lord has done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Let's not forget that part, good morning. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. We welcome you to the worship experience uh, that is New Calvary Baptist Church, amen. We believe um, that this is a wonderful place filled with wonderful people because we serve a wonderful God. We are grateful for all of those who are sharing with us, even in the sanctuary, but we also want to thank God. Please put your hands together for those who are sharing with us virtually as we uh, recognize and acknowledge our virtual worshipers on this day as we come thankful for all that the Lord has done. Done. Amen. Just want to give a few announcements. Don't want to slow anything down. Just want to keep moving. Want to thank all of you who showed up this weekend for our leadership workshop. Amen. All of you who showed up. Amen. You need to know we had an awesome and wonderful time in the Lord. Dr. D. Dow Griffin just blessed us, taught us, educated us, enlightened us revealed to us and told us so much about ourselves, our Enneagram process um, and understanding our numbers and how our numbers affect worship and what it is we do. And so we are thankful uh, for the experience, thankful for everybody who worked so diligently and faithful to put that together, our deacons and our trustees. Thank God for our media ministry who was always on point. Uh, grateful for all of those who came out to share and we hope and pray uh, as we continue that we're going to take those nuggets and have some meetings in the very, very near future uh, as we talk about what it is we need to do as we 
talk about moving forward and being the church that is relevant and meaningful uh, in this modern day. I'm going to talk about and look at this thing about commissions and uh, how we can evaluate these commissions and what they help us to understand. And so we will continue to move forward. And so look forward to more things to come as we continue to grow and identify and put the fingerprint on New Calvary Baptist Church for our future. I also want you to be mindful of Women's Connection and Brotherhood Ministry event that is taking place uh, this Saturday, September the 17th at 10 a.m. Come on, put your hands together. Come on and celebrate that. Amen. Amen. We need to know, we need to understand, have some clarity. Uh, there's going to be a forum on domestic violence. You see that? Uh, so please know uh, there will be information shared uh, and things to know. And you don't have to be a victim or exposed to domestic violence to come uh, to this event so often, so often in our community. We operate in the fact, well, if it's not happening to me, then it does not matter. But the truth of the matter is all of us in some way, shape, or form, know some folks uh, who are uh, victims or exposed to domestic violence and so we need to be aware of what those signs are what those indicators are and what we can do uh, to help and move forward so that is this Saturday at 10 a.m. make sure that if you are able to have your face in the place please call the church office to sign up and to register for that event um, we are also excited, you can put your hands together for this too, our family and friends day is quickly approaching as we are excited, amen, about coming forward, sharing uh, that week of uh, 20, 20th October, the 20th through the 23rd, please make sure that you mark your calendars off to be available for all of the events that are going to take place. It's going to be a great weekend of fun and fellowship uh, and coming together as we uh, welcome back, you know, like welcome back Cotter. We're going to start singing welcome back, invite some people uh, to show up and be a part of that fellowship. We are excited about what is going to take place. There's going to be a meeting scheduled um, Sometime this week, we'll make a mass announcement for all of those who are interested in being a part of, of that committee and that detail, and we will be providing that as things come. Uh, we also uh, want to, not that this is a big deal, um, but uh, we are also going to be uh, blessed by my dear friend, uh, friend of New Calvary Baptist Church, uh, the Reverend Dr. Eugene Gibson is going to be here uh, on the weekend of the 9th. I don't know what's happening around that time. I think it's somebody's birthday around that time, but we're going to celebrate and have a good time. And so Dr. Gibson will be here sharing with us. And so we want you to make sure uh, on the night that you are in the place uh, to celebrate and to hear a mighty word uh, from the Lord. He is um, doing big things out there now in Columbus, Ohio, as he has made his transition from Memphis to Columbus. So we're eager to, for him to share with us. Want to just remind all of you to continue to be faithful in your giving as we continue to grow and just share uh, in this season. Your tithes and offerings mean all as we continue to grow and do this thing called ministry here at New Calvary. You can bring or drop off or mail uh, your tithes and offerings to 800 East Virginia Beach Boulevard uh, here in the city of Norfolk 23504 or please feel free uh, to go on GiveLify on your tablet, smartphone uh, or iPad and make New Calvary your favorite place to give uh, as we continue to move forward and grow in the spirit. Please make sure that you are liking and subscribing all of our platforms on media as we continue to branch out uh, in ministry as we do everything that we can uh, for um, the kingdom of God in new ways and as we continue to expand. Uh, we are looking forward uh, to continuing to move in worship as we have been blessed already by this outstanding musical aggregation. Amen. They have blessed us. So we want to uh, continue to pray even in this moment. We pray for the celebration of life services that are still pen pending uh, for Sister Presley, who is uh, the sister of Brother Greg Fordham. Uh, she passed away last week. Uh, we pray for Brother Robert Branch, who's a role Rosemont Health and Rehab. We pray for Sister Sandra Norman, who is in 
recovery. We pray for, um, excuse me, Westminster Canterbury. We pray for Janice uh, Blackwell, Sister uh, Trustee Jennifer Blackwell, uh, Willie Bobby Brown, uh, Antonio Hillho, uh, Arthur Simmons, our brother who was asking for prayer, Muaya Dean, Elizabeth Harris, uh, China Valens, Crystal Carson, Jackie and Fernando Carson, Virginia Davis, Jason Dew, Reuben Dunn, Deacon Karen English, Yvonne Hicks, Raymond Hopkins, Lily Rachel Humphreys, who is here. I see you. I see you. Hugh Jones, Leonthea Miller, Dennis Norman, Robert Spencer, Esther Thompson, Dolores and Joe Turner, Clara Welch, Ashley Washington, LaBarbara Willis, and Maxine Wright. We pray also for Brother Todd Farrell, uh, who lost his brother on yesterday. And so we just continue to pray uh, for them in this time. If there are others who are laid upon your heart uh, that you wish to pray for, that you continue uh, prayer concerned, we would ask that you would lift those names and simply call those names in this moment as we go forward and go to the Lord in a word of prayer. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. Agree with me, we're all a part of God's. It is His will, it is His will that every need be supplied. You are important to me, I need you to survive. You are. Come on, let's sing it again. I need you. Let somebody know. I need you. I need you. You need me. You need me. We're all a part. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God. It is his will. Here's the other part. I want you to tell somebody. Look at them and simply tell them this. Say, I pray for you. I pray for you. You pray for me. Tell them I love you. Tell them I need you to survive. Here it is. Tell them I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. Look at somebody else and tell them I pray for you. You pray for me. Tell them I love you. I need you to survive. Promise I won't harm you with words from my mouth. Tell them I love you. I need you to survive. Oh, that ain't good enough. Find a third person. Say, I pray for you. You pray for me. Tell them I love you. I love you. I love you. I need you. I won't harm you. It is his will, it is his will that every need be supplied. You are important to me, I need you to survive. You are important to me, I need you to God, we bless your name this morning. Thank you for the grace and the goodness that has woke us up this morning and started us on our way. God, we're grateful for your power that just continues to sustain us each and every day. And so, God, we don't take for granted 
the opportunity to be in a worship today whether virtually or here in the sanctuary God we're just grateful that we could hear and be and experience your presence so God right now in the wonderful name of Jesus we're asking you to bless this you the new Calvary family Bless us, God, as we continue to go forward. Bless our needs and our concerns right now. Bless, God, our petitions that you would hear our voices. Whatever it is we need, whatever it is we're going through, Lord, we believe that you're still in the blessing business. Believe that you're still making ways out of no way. Believe that you're still healing. Believe that you're still delivering. Believe, God, that your hand of comfort is still upon us. And God, when the road gets rough, God, when the things of life get heavy, God, when the storm begins to rage, we ask simply, God, that you would just remind us that you're still God all by yourself. Remind us, God, that you're still working things out in sight, seen, and unseen. Keep us there, God, that in all things we would give you praise, honor, and glory. That, God, we would understand that we are the head and not the tail. That we would understand, Lord, that you're still making ways and providing for us and opportunities and possibilities that we have not yet realized. God, we pray for our neighbor right now. That whatever it is they need, whatever it is they're going through, whatever it is they're dealing with, touch them right now in the name of Jesus. Let us have an encouraging word for them. Let us have an opportunity to be positive and, dis and, and displace and place in them, God, right now, an opportunity of hope. That whatever the despair is, God, let them understand that you're still God and working it out. Whatever the challenge might be, let them be reminded that you brought them out of challenges before. Whatever the storm might be, God, let them know that you're still the umbrella and the covering that can keep them. So God, right now, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you just continue to keep your children. As we worship together, as we go forward together, as we understand, God, that you're still building, you're still creating, you're still making opportunities, and you're still making crooked places straight, and you're still making rough places smooth, and you're still lowering mountains, and you're still getting us through valleys. We say thank you, God, for everything that you've done. We say thank you for the ways that you've made. We say thank you for providing for us in and out. We thank you for being being God in season and out of season and as long as we got breath in our bodies as long as we got an opportunity to say thank you we'll praise your holy name as long as we got an opportunity to give you glory we'll say thank you so have your way God continue to keep us and in all things we'll give you the praise honor and glory we will recognize you we will say thank you we will humble ourselves at your feet we will bow down in your presence and we will say greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world and we'll go forward believing that you haven't brought us this far to leave us we say thank you thank you thank you in all things the people of God say amen say amen and say amen Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, say, I pray for you. Pray. You pray for me. Come on, tell him I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you. Come on, Doc, take it up one, take it up one. I pray for you. You pray for me. Come on, I love you. I love you. I need you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you. Come on, one more time. I pray. I, you pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. Come on, I won't harm you with words from my mouth. Here it is. It is his will. It is that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. 
You are important to me. Come on, put your hands together and bless God in this place. Come on, let's receive the choir as they lead us in worship.
many of you know, he is wonderful. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Can I just share something with you? I received a text message last night. Some of you all received a text message last night. Doc Christian, um, well, Elder Moody, let me start the story like that. Elder Moody is on vacation. He's supposed to be back today. Got a text last night, said, my flight was delayed, which caused me to miss my connecting flight. So I won't be there. I'm trying to get there, but I won't be there when service starts. I've informed Doc, and Doc knows what to do. Now, I don't want anybody to get this twisted. I'm not talking about one over the other. I'm talking about team. I'm talking about team. Now we thank God that we miss Elder Moody, but we thank God for Doc Christian. Here's the other side. That's this side. Now comes this side. If you get caught up in who's doing what, you can mess around and miss your blessing. Because if you come to see one or the other, or one preacher or the other, you might miss what God is trying to impart. It ain't just who's in the spot, it's how we're willing to receive. And so I'm grateful for the team that is New Calvary and the team that is becoming New Calvary. And that is, I believe, what this weekend was about and what we will work on and continue to grow as we move forward. And my prayer is that you would want to be a part of this movement as we go forward and do great things for God. God, we love you. We thank you for the spirit moving. Uh, thank you for your power in the moment. That the word and your words still work. That all we need to do look back over our lives and the words hallelujah salvation and glory honor and power begin to resonate in our spirits so God touch us right now that we might be fed we might be ministered to that this word might speak to our hearts worship. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your love. Use this moment as shop time that you might build your people and that I might hide behind the cross and the glorious
is yours, and yours alone. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of thy grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and let my will be lost in thine. It is in the wonderful, marvelous, and majestic name of Jesus, the people of God together say, Amen. 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 I call your attention to 2 Kings. Uh, some of y'all still got your Bibles to it from last week. 2 Kings chapter 20, beginning at verse 12. 2 Kings chapter 20, beginning at verse 12. I'll read through verse 19. It reads this way in the international version. It says, At that time, Merodach Baladan, son of, son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent Hezekiah letters and a gift because he had heard of Hezekiah's illness. Hezekiah received the messengers and showed them all that was in his storehouse the silver, the gold, the spices and the fine oil, his armory and everything among his treasures. There was nothing in his palace or in all his kingdom that Hezekiah did not show them. Then Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah and asked, what did those men say and where did they come from? From a distant land, Hezekiah replied, they came from Babylon. The prophet asked, what did they see in your palace? Hezekiah said, they saw everything in my palace. There is nothing among my treasures that I did not show them. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, hear the word of the Lord. The time will surely come when everything in your palace and all that your fathers have stored up until this day will be carried off to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord. And some of your descendants your own flesh and blood that will be born to you will be taken away and they will become eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. The word of the Lord you have spoken is good, Hezekiah replied. For he thought, will there not be peace and security in my lifetime? The Bible says in verse 13, Hezekiah received the messengers and showed them all that was in his storehouse, the silver, the gold, the spices, and the fine oil, his armory, and everything found among his treasures. There was nothing in his palace or in all his kingdom that Hezekiah did not show them. The prophet is asked uh, in verse 15, what did they see in your palace? They saw everything in my palace, Hezekiah said. There is nothing among my treasures that I did not show them. I want to talk from this thought today. <clears throat> the right way to be an influence. The right way to be an influence. Brother Helm, I was at the jail the other day, and some of the officers who were younger uh, were talking among themselves. They were taking a break, and they were looking at their cell phones, and one of them mentioned that Beyonce's album was trending. This was some weeks ago. No, I'm not going to say anything about you on break myself. And one of them said that the album is trending. And it was coming out, or it was just coming out, and the officers, other officers said, yeah, I know, I saw it. It's already got one million likes. Now, I understood the concept, but something told me to look into it a little bit deeper. And Sister Harriet, what I discovered is that influencers, they're called, actually make a profit from their content. I didn't know that. An influencer with a following of 10 to 50,000 followers can earn anywhere between 40 and $100,000. While influencers with millions of followers can earn tens of thousands of dollars per post. So it's important to make sure that what you're doing on social media gets all of its likes, gets all of its thumbs up. The more followers, the greater your influence. 
And there are a lot of people out there trying to be influencers. Let me say this. There are a lot of people out there with no talent <laughs> trying to be influencers. People will post or flash the funniest moments. People uh, will air out their business and tell their most painful secrets. People will do the latest dance challenge or create competitions. Folks will talk tough and make up ridiculous arguments. People will articulate their political views and positions and insult and disrespect others all on their own. And people will subject themselves to behavior that would be considered less than noble for the opportunity for somebody just to hit the like button so that their influence can grow. There was a study that showed that there's a psychology for what they call the thumbs up phenomenon. The study said those who felt like they didn't have much purpose in other areas of their lives got a boost of self-esteem when they received a large number of likes. Those who had a larger sense of purpose, of self-esteem, had other stuff to do, didn't get the same sense of satisfaction from the likes they received in social media. Now, I'm not digging on social media. I'm not coming for social media. What I'm trying to get us to understand is influence. Way before the internet, there was influence. When you laughed in class because somebody like me did something, and you got put out or reprimanded, that was influence. When you got in trouble because you and your girlfriend or you and your homeboys decided to risk it and go to the party across town instead of where you told your parents you were originally going, that's influence. And everybody has heard this at least once in their lifetime. If Johnny jumps off the bridge, you gonna do the same thing? That's a question about influence. People have always been influenced by other people. And the question I'm posing this morning is what kind of influencer are you? What do you influence people to do? What do you influence people to think or believe? Now, we got to recognize that there are good influencers and there are bad influencers. The mentor, the coach of a team, a teacher who spends time inspiring their students, a neighbor who teaches a child in this community a skill or an ability, those are good influencers. But a person who leads a gang to commit a crime, a parent that trains their children to get over on other people or to manipulate people to get what they want, a police officer who abuses the community they serve instead of support and protect it, those are bad influences. What kind of influence do you leave when people experience you doing what you do? Do you leave people feeling like they can't achieve things? Or do you leave people believing like the sky is the limit? Do you leave people at peace or do you leave folks with a bad taste in their mouth? Do you bring together or do you create division? Here it is. How much do you influence others to see the God in you? You know, you can show people a lot of stuff. We can lead people to a lot of different paths. But what kind of choices do you lead people to? Do people see your light or do people get influenced by your darkness? Someone who talks about faith, someone who talks about the powerful and believing in the love and grace of giving God. How does your belief help you influence other people? As we talk about building this space to be the church, as we talk about this leadership weekend and we understand how our influence and how our own testimony can demonstrate and display who God is in our own lives. We need to be mindful, my brothers and sisters, of the kind of significant influence we have. And based upon our understanding of that influence, how we show people the goodness and the power of God we believe in, we need to show others the light that we have received and a light that can inspire the world. There are a whole lot of ways to make an impact in the world, but God's evidence in our lives can help show people the right way to be an influence. So journey in the text and see. And, and as we un unpack this thing, that your influence, our influence, has to begin with having the proper perspective. Hezekiah, the king of Judah, has been a faithful king. He's been a good king when you put him up against the other kings of Judah. 
He's been trusted and he's been obedient to listen to the Lord during his reign. In the list of kings that have come since David, there have been few who have been decent, but Hezekiah has been the one who has trusted and listened to the Lord. Hezekiah has not been without his struggles, mind you. He's had his share of challenges. He's had to deal with his own stuff and process his need to be faithful. Hezekiah has going through some stuff, but stop right there. Hezekiah is trying to be a faithful influence. He's trying to be a good leader. And at the same time, he deals with his own challenges and his own struggles. That's a good place to say that as a good influence, you're, you don't want to make the mistake of thinking that just because you're in leadership that you won't have any struggles. I don't want you to think that just because you're in position of influence, that just because you're in position of leadership, just because you're in a position that allows people to be influenced by you or to sway people, it does not mean your life is going to be perfect. doesn't mean that you won't have any struggles. Leaders have challenges. Influencers get stressed. Leaders get down. Leaders worry about the outcome. Leaders have family issues. Influencers run into financial challenges. Leaders get depressed. Leaders get caught up in circumstances that are beyond their control. And watch this. Leaders make mistakes. The challenges with the persona of an influencer is that it's always picture perfect and rosy. The issue that we have with influencers is they always try to present a perfect picture. The landscape is always green. The issues are always handled. That's what they show you in the picture. That's what they put up on the screen. But the real leader knows that I've got to push sometimes when my kids have been acting up. I've got to be faithful to the task even when I don't have the energy. I've got to show up even when I'm going through stuff in my own life. Don't get swayed by the picture because even the best influencers struggle with life issues. Don't think that because you're an influencer, you're some kind of leader that you won't go through stuff. Don't get mad at God just because you got position that you find yourself stressed out every now and then. And just because you go through some stuff doesn't mean that you can't be a leader. Good leaders are honest about where they are. Good leaders are honest about what they need. Good leaders don't mask it. Good leaders are honest about what they're working through. I'm in the text. Look at verse 12. Merodach Baladan, son of the king of Babylon, sent Hezekiah letters and sent him a gift because he heard Hezekiah was sick. Hold it right there. The son of the king of Babylon sent a letter and a gift in celebration of Hezekiah's recovery. But it could have been easily a letter of condolence. The king, the son of the king sent a letter congratulating him that he got well. But it could have easily been a letter of so sorry for your loss. You see, if you read chapter 20, you'll see that early in the verses, Hezekiah became ill to the point of death. Look at it when you get home. Verse 1 says that Hezekiah was on his way out. And the, fake, the fact of the situation was so serious that Isaiah the prophet told Hezekiah, the Lord says, put your house in order because you're going to die. You will not recover. Imagine hearing the prophet of God sharing those words with you, saying that it is the will of the Lord that you get things together because you ain't going to make it. Isaiah took the look at Hezekiah and figured that everything was over, but appearance must have looked like he wasn't going to make it. But in verse 2, the Bible says that Hezekiah turned his face to the wall. That Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and he prayed to the Lord, Remember, O Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully and wholeheartedly with devotion, have done what is good in your eyes. Hezekiah, watch this, despite the prophet's report, went to pray on his own behalf to the Lord and to ask God to remember him. And the text says, before Isaiah could get to the parking lot, the Lord came to him and said, turn around. Go back and tell Hezekiah that I have heard his prayer and seen his tears and I'm going to heal him on the third day. Tell him to go to the temple of the Lord and I will add 15 years to his life. And I'm going to deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. Y'all missed your shout. 
The prophet told him, get your affairs in order. But Hezekiah prayed to the Lord for himself. And the Lord sent word to Isaiah and tell Hezekiah, I'm going to add 15 more years and he's going to deliver his people from the enemy. Some of y'all still ain't getting it. The prophet sent him a word, but Hezekiah's own prayer it changed the result. Okay, here it is. Sometimes you got to go to the Lord on your own behalf because the Lord can hear your petition and even change the prophecy. Oh, come on, somebody. I need y'all to get with this thing that there's somebody who can declare that when you go to the Lord on your own behalf, God can change the news story. God can shift the headline. See, just because Isaiah's a prophet doesn't mean he controls the prediction. Okay, y'all missing this thing. Just because he's a prophet doesn't mean he controls the prediction. The prophet only de delivers what, the, what God is trying to say. The prophet only delivers what God is trying to say. And so God still responds to the prayers of the righteous. Hezekiah goes before God himself and said, Lord, remember me because I've been faithful. What I'm asking you for is a little bit of your grace. I know what my situation looks like, but if you could just find some grace for me, I sure would be thankful. And because Hezekiah prayed, it didn't matter what the prophecy was, didn't matter what Isaiah said, God shifted and gave another result. <laughs> Ask the prophet to go to the Lord on your behalf is fine. Asking the preacher to pray for you and your family is all right. Having the pastor or the deacon call on the Lord for you is acceptable. Having a prayer partner and the saints of God calling on the name of the Lord for you is okay. Intercessory prayer is a powerful thing. But if you want to be an influence, you need to turn your face to the wall every now and then and ask the Lord for some grace. Ask the Lord for some help. Petition the Lord and say, God, I need you to have some mercy on me you need to have the kind of perspective that says I can't do this without the Lord you need to have the kind of outlook that says I need the Lord to show up and change this whole situation I need God you to show up and do something about all of this I don't know what to do but God I'm coming to you and I'm asking you to shift this thing around the prophet got the interpretation right but he got the outcome wrong and I ain't got no problem with that I ain't got no problem with that as a prophet. I ain't got no problem getting it mixed up when God sets it straight. When God sets it straight, they ain't a preacher worth they saw in the world who wouldn't mind being wrong when the Lord turns somebody's situation around. They ain't a preacher worth they saw that would get bent out of shape if what they prophesied didn't happen and come to pass because the Lord had changed that thing around so the Son of God could understand that there's still power in the name of the Lord. I might deliver the message, but I don't control the outcome. God is still working this thing out. <laughs> Prophet got it wrong. He got it mixed up. But he did what he was supposed to do, but the, but the outcome got changed. Uh, so, so watch this. The son, watch this, Sister Whitehead. The son of King of Babylon shows up with a letter and some gifts. Right? It's not a funeral, but a celebration. Heard you were feeling down. Glad that you're back on the mend. It's not a condolence letter. It's a letter of good news. Hezekiah has experienced the Lord's grace, and he's got a testimony of what the Lord has done. Can't you thank God? Well, when some folks said it was over, God had a change of heart. Can't you thank God that when people wrote your situation off, God said, I can extend it just a little bit longer, more than people can understand that when folks were getting ready for your ending, God gave you an extension. When folk were ready to write you off, God said, I got another plan for you, and I got another way for you to be extended in this situation. Can a few of y'all in here just get excited that God gives extension. Okay. Y'all ain't feeling it that way. Let me do it from the left hand side. When um, I got my first apartment. Got my first apartment. I got my first apartment with my cousin. My cousin Lance. And we were trying to pay rent down there at Virginia Union right there in the back. Right there at the back of the school. We tried to pay rent. And the lady told us, the rental lady told us the rent was due 
on the first of every month. And there would be a penalty and a late fee if you did not get the money in. She was serious. And learning the ropes of adulthood, learning how things go and responsibility, we got caught up. You know how that go. Went to a uh, store instead of save the money. You know, went to the party instead of save the money. You know how that go. And I looked up. Don't look at me funny. Y'all know how that go. Don't get brand new. <laughs> and I looked up one morning, looked up one morning, and I said, it's the third of the month. I said to my cousin Lance, I said, Lord Jesus, we forgot to pay the rent. I said, we about to get put out. I said to my cousin, my cousin said, what you going to do? Wrote the check, ran over there, Mr. Ray Day. I ran out to the house, went to the office, knocked on the door, spoke to the rental manager. She stood right there. She looked at me sheepishly, handed her the check with a whole bunch of apologies. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Over and over again, finally she said, Mr. Small, you can give me the check. I handed the check. I said, how much is the late fee? She said, you, don't have, you didn't acquire a late fee. I said, well, I thought if it was late, there was a fee. She said, well, technically, it's late. She said, but there is a grace period. <laughs> she said, there's a grace period. There's a five-day grace period. I said, a grace period? She said, yeah, you got five days between the first and the fifth before the late penalty kicks in. And all I'm trying to ask y'all is how many of y'all are grateful that God got a grace period? How many of y'all understand that God has given you a grace period that it didn't look good, but you can thank God for your grace period that you didn't do what you were supposed to do, but somebody in here said, oh, come on, don't fool me. You know that God showed up with a grace period in your life when there was some stuff you knew was supposed to come your way. You knew there was some circumstances and conditions based upon your behavior, but can I get 10 of y'all in here just to thank God for the grace? Period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Influence, our influence means that we got to first show up with the proper perspective. But here's the second thing real fast. Your influence has to make sure you give the proper presentation. See, watch this. Hezekiah has a terminal diagnosis, right? But his perspective changed the situation. And God extended him this grace period. And the Babylonians have shown up to send letters and gifts in honor of his recovery. Uh, now, no doubt Hezekiah is ecstatic to hear the news, and he's eager to celebrate his good report. Who wouldn't be? Now, Mer Merodach Beladon, son of king of Babylon, shows up with his entourage, and he arrives. Hezekiah, it says, the Bible says, Hezekiah showed them everything in his house. Look at verse 13. When you get a chance, Hezekiah received the messengers and showed them all that was in this storehouse, the silver, the gold, the spices, and the fine oil, his armory, meaning his weapon stash, and everything found in his treasures. Hezekiah didn't spare anything and showed them everything that he had in his kingdom. Why would Hezekiah do such a thing? Let's go to the video tape. Check the history. He said earlier that Hezekiah was faithful to the Lord. Hezekiah was faithful. He was a good king. And during his reign, Judah actually got delivered from Assyria. Now, at this time, Assyria and Babylon are at odds. And Babylon has not yet taken over Judah of Israel. So, there are three nations at war. They're at odds with each other. Judah, Babylon, and Assyria. Assyria is stronger than Babylon, but Assyria and Babylon are both stronger than Judah. Assyria and Babylon are stronger than Judah. Judah, Hezekiah's nation, is the weakest. So the rulers of Babylon show up to celebrate Hezekiah's recovery. Hezekiah figures it's time to start an alliance. And in Babylon and Judah come together, we can defeat. Assyria. So, to show how strong Judah is, he shows them everything he possesses. Hezekiah shows the messengers of Babylon everything to show strength of the nation. You missed it. Hezekiah is trying to be an influencer. He's trying to influence Babylon 
to accept and form an alliance. Here it is. You got to be careful that your need to be accepted doesn't expose you to a place that you compromise your place and your position. Sometimes the need to be liked will cause you to compromise your place and position and will cause you to shrink instead of grow. Hezekiah was more wrapped up in the presentation of the material things than the meaning of what he had already accomplished. Can I help you? It wasn't the material things that made them powerful. It was the power behind the powerful things that made them powerful. It wasn't the stuff they possessed that made them the influencers. The influence came from the power that they've been working with. See, too many times we think that what we're presenting means the most. But in reality, it's what motivates us that is the real driving force. See, too many times we confuse acceptance with equality. I need to say that again. We make the mistake of assessing acceptance with equality. You can be accepted and not considered equal. <laughs> uh, okay, let me put it to you like this. Jim Brown, Hall, NFL Hall of Famer, tells a story. I think I saw it somewhere in a movie or something. Uh, that he went to Georgia, home to Georgia to visit. He was a football star, just graduated from Syracuse, was on his way to Cleveland Browns and NFL. And he went over to the rich white family near his home where his mother worked. They knew him as Jimmy. They knew him as Jimmy. He's coming home, graduated from Syracuse University, draft pick, headed to Cleveland Browns, and he's sitting there talking, and the family is talking about how proud they are of Jimmy. How proud they are of Jimmy. And that it was just something heavy that needed to go on. Uh, there was all this stuff that was happening. But they're just remembering when he was a young lad and all of these gifts and all of these things that he had, and he went to Syracuse, and they were just so glad that all of this was happening for him. Somebody was trying to move something heavy into the house. Jim Brown said, do you want to help me with that? The white man said, no, Jim, you know we don't allow colors in the front door. <laughs> Acceptance does not mean equality. Just because you're accepted in certain places doesn't mean you're considered equal. Clarence Thomas might need to learn that. Candace Owens might need to learn that. Tim Scott might need to learn that. Best understand that just because you're accepted doesn't mean you're considered equal. But there are those who would compromise their worth and their integrity just to be accepted rather than to work and make sure that they are equal. equal. Be careful of those who are bearing gifts because some people just came to see, not to support. Be careful of folk who come in with gifts all the time. Some of them just come in to see. You know how that go. Hey, listen, how you doing? Listen, I came just to drop this off. I heard you got the new house. God bless you. Just want to drop this off. Well, look, I can't stay long. I just want to. If I'm lying, stop me. <laughs> Hezekiah wants to impress. And so he's showing off the impressive stuff. Hezekiah wants to influence the Babylonians to see, to show that he's so strong and mighty. But showing everything to the wrong people can expose you to situations that you really don't want to deal with. Showing it all will bring you criticism. Showing it all can bring you scrutiny. Showing it all can bring opinions that you didn't ask for. Showing it all will bring you from people who don't have as much as you have. Showing it all will bring people scrutiny and people jealousy from people who don't have what you have and don't want and want what you want. Showing it all will show people what you really value. Showing it all will tell people what matters to you the most. And showing it all will let people know who you really are. Okay, I'm going to say this real quick, then we're going to move on. When you show it all, there are those who are going to come for you. 
when you show it all, there are those who are going to come for you. There's a lot I can say about Bishop Lamar Whitehead. Y'all know Bishop Whitehead, New York preacher. In there, talk about New York preacher got robbed in his church. There's a lot I could say about that. So much I could say. But what I'll say is, if you're walking around with $400,000 worth of jewelry, and you got homes and cars, and you got on a Fendi suit and Gucci shoes, if you're showing it all, somebody going to come for you. Can I keep it? Can I keep it 100? Can I keep it 100? Where I'm from? Where I'm from, where, where me and Mo from, from the Northeast, you can't flex and not get God. You can't flex and not get God. And, but, you, and, but here's it is, but it also exposes who your character is. Because flexing in front of a bunch of poor people ain't really flexing. Flexing in front of a whole bunch of people who don't have half as much ain't really doing it big. When you try to, to impress or do it for the wrong reason, there will always be consequences. You see, we got this prosperity thing all wrong. We define this thing, prosperity, as in God's going to give you more. But prosperity is to be, by definition, means to be successful or to thrive. Ain't nothing in that definition about money. And I'm not knocking you and your hustle. I ain't knocking you getting your money. You won't get money. You want to grow in that way. God be praised. But the Western definition of success has prioritized money and made money synonymous with prosperity. But you can be prosperous in a whole bunch of different ways. Our grandparents weren't rich, but they bought houses and land and put children through school. People in third world countries aren't necessarily financially well off to our standard, but they live lives that have meaning and purpose. There are people in the world who don't have six figures in their bank account, but they still manage to see the majesty and the working power of God in their lives. I'm prosperous when I'm successful in life. I'm prosperous when I'm a good human being. I'm prosperous when I can think of something other than my Myself. I'm prosperous when I can look to help others. I'm successful when I prioritize God in all of my situations. Hezekiah tried to show the Babylonians stuff when they should have led them to the spirit. But what he should have done is talked about the spirit. Hezekiah got wrapped up in stuff, but he really should have talked about the spirit. Hezekiah just got a great health report. He should have said, it wasn't the gold that kept us. It was the goodness of the Lord. It wasn't the silver that makes us strong. It was the saving grace of God that leads us each and every day. If we didn't have these riches, we would still be strong because the Lord Almighty keeps us day in and day out. And I declare that when your perspective is not what I've imagined, it gives me strength, but it's the goodness of the Lord that has allowed me to do what I need to do each and every day. You got a whole different understanding of what it is to be prosperous. Not the stuff, but the strength of the Lord that keeps me. Not the material, but the moving, miracle-working power of God that continues to bless me every day. And I need to know some people in here understand that I've seen what God can do. I've seen God show up in my situation. I've seen God move despite my condition and I've been prosperous and I've been blessed more than I imagined because God keeps on looking out for me. I don't care. I had not a dime in my pocket, but I've said I've been blessed more than I can ever imagine. Somebody knows I was sleeping in my car, but I said God still looks beyond my faults and meets every one of my needs. Somebody in here could say, I don't know what a bank account is. I've been shooting to the check cash in place, but through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Is there anybody here that knows God is still good despite what other folks say is prosperous. My prosperity ain't based on my bank account. If I got money, God be praised. 
but I'll praise God uh, in, in the corner. I'll praise God in the car. I'll praise God in the, in the cardboard box. I'll praise God whatever it is because I know how good the Lord has been. Uh, you got to understand this thing uh, moves into uh, our perspective and then it moves into those priorities. So here's the final thing. The influence needs to be made because our influence needs to make sure that you reinforce the proper priority. Hezekiah shows the messengers from Babylon everything. The Bible said it. We read it. There was not a thing that in the kingdom that Hezekiah did not show them. Not a thing. Hezekiah was trying to impress them with possessions. But he, but he confused the possessions with the real power. And Isaiah the prophet came to him and said, who were they? Who, who was those fellas just left? And where they come from? Hezekiah said, they came from Babylon. I think I just broke a deal that will put us in a good place. Isaiah said, what do you mean you broke the deal? What happened? What, what did you do? What did you show them in your palace? Hezekiah stuck his chest out, put his hands in his pocket, said, I showed them everything. Everything? Everything. Hezekiah said, there was nothing among the treasures that I didn't show. Isaiah looked at him and said, hear the word of the Lord. The time will surely come when everything in your palace and all that your fathers have stored up to this day is going to be carried off by Babylon. Nothing is going to be left, says the Lord. And some of your own descendants, some of your own flesh and blood that are going to be born to you, they're going to be taken away and they're going to become eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Isaiah tells Hezekiah, you're doing too much. You went too far. You exposed yourself too much, and you didn't create partnership. You created a poisonous situation. Can I help some of y'all? Anytime you got to compromise yourself to stay in relationship, you in toxic relationship. <laughs> Anytime you got to compromise who you are, that you are in toxic, you are in a poisonous situation. Uh, somebody said a long time ago, at one point, there needs to be a point in the conversation where everybody knows that you are willing to walk away. Because if you don't, they're going to keep pushing the line and keep pushing the line to the point where you ain't even going to know who you are anymore. There has to be some point when you say, that's it. That's enough. I had it. Ain't going to be no more. You've compromised who you are trying to be accepted and you displayed and showed the wrong stuff. And Babylon is about to take advantage of that. You see, it's not about what you possess. Possessing, possessions aren't necessarily evil. If, if God has blessed you, then go forward. But just know everybody can't appreciate or respect your blessing. The wrong people will abuse what you worked for. The wrong influence will have you thinking that what you have isn't as important as what somebody else has. When we operate from a place of insecurity, we create unhealthy competition. And unhealthy competition breeds contempt. Babylonians discover they didn't have, they didn't have, they didn't have, we ain't got, listen, we ain't got to fight Assyria. We could just conquer Judah. They said, we ain't got to go and battle Assyria. We could just go ahead and conquer Judah. And Isaiah told Hezekiah, you just gave them the inspiration and the idea to do it. You shared too much to the wrong people, and you're going to lose what your ancestors built. There's going to be consequences for trying to be accepted when you had everything you already needed. You had everything you already needed. Isaiah said, you wanted to show them strength? You should have showed them the Ark of the Covenant that made the journey across the Jordan. You want to see power? You should have showed them the stones of the ancestors that you took from the bottom of the Jordan and made the memorial of where y'all crossed over. You wanted a testimony of what the Lord has done for the people? You should have showed them power. You should have showed them where the Lord and told them the story about how the Lord sent manna in the morning and quail in the evening. They wanted to know what made us so strong? You should have showed them the wall that you prayed to and turned your face and asked God to change your situation and God get 
scourged you and gave you 15 more years. You just showed them the stuff of the kingdom. You didn't let them know the power that the kingdom was working with. Hezekiah wanted to be an influencer, but he influenced the wrong thing. He didn't lift up as God saved him. He didn't talk about how God had moved him. He thought the material things that he held on to were what mattered. And if you want to be a real influencer, my brothers and sisters, if you really want to make a difference, just don't show people the stuff around you. Show them the God inside you. Show them the God that has done stuff for you. Show them the lessons that you've learned by living your life to the best of your ability and giving God credit for what happened in your life. If you want to be some influence and influence somebody, influence them with your kindness. Influence them with showing off your grace. Influence them with showing the love that you know how to give with the willingness to share. Show them that the influence you give is because the greatest influence of your life is the power of what the Lord has done in your situation and how God has blessed you. Show the people that the power of God is influencing you and show somebody how to save a life. Here it is. I shared this story before about my lion brother's mother. One of the most memorable days in my life was driving on Route 280 uh, in New Jersey on a Tuesday morning headed towards Jersey City, Salem Baptist Church to work and I could see smoke coming from the skyline in New York. Every radio station that still had power was talking about a plane that had hit one of the World Trade Center towers. There was only one plane at the time. By the time I got to the church, the second tower had been hit. I'm sitting there. We're all at work in the office and we're watching glued to this little TV that's got all of this snow on it because the antennas for the whole area were on top of the World Trade Center. So everything is smoky, everything is hazy, and we're trying to watch it and look. And then it hit me, I remembered. My line brother, Arvell, his mother worked in the tower. And she was already in the explosion that took place in 1993 with the van in the garage when the bomb hit there. And I got to my office, ran to my office, got on the phone, called my line brother. He answered the phone. I said, Val, I said, yo, what's going on, man? I'm sitting there watching TV. Just thought about your mom. Just thought about your mom. He told me, man, we hadn't heard anything yet. We not sure. We hadn't heard anything yet. We not sure. We chatted for a moment. It was hard to make small talk. You know, it's hard to catch up with all that stuff going on. And someone called down to the basement where he was in. They said, Arvell. They said, your mother just called. She's fine. He broke down. He broke down, started crying, broke down. I said, yo, man, it's all good. It's all good. We ain't got to say nothing else. Yo, mom, good. You good. We'll all, I'll call you tomorrow, and we'll talk. We'll catch up tomorrow. I called him the next day, and the next day, he gave me the story. He said, my mother was in the elevator going to her floor. There were people in the elevator with her, a whole bunch of people that, like they do every morning, going to their floors, going to where they needed to go executives, office workers, everybody going the way they needed to go and then all of a sudden the elevator shook and they heard the bang. They said when they got off the elevator, the security told them everything's all right, everything's okay. A plane hit the building, but just go to your offices and go to your floors. A plane hit the building, but go to your offices, go to your floor. Bell's mother said, what? Go to work? A plane just hit this building. Now, remember, she had been in the explosion in 93. She said, so there were people who got off, and they looking around, thinking whether, you know, folk, them wondering folk, they wondering whether they should go to the office or what, what they should do. She said, my, my LB said, <laughs> Arvell said, my mother didn't hesitate. She said, no, I'm going down. That's where I'm going. I'm getting out this building. I'm going down. And some folk who saw her, they were like, we don't know what's going to happen. I'm going down. Other folk who were on, I'm talking about executives. I'm talking about people who wrote checks. I'm talking about people who made decisions. They looked at her. They looked at their office. They said, I'm going with you. You, Miss Cray, and we going that way. And they started going down them steps and exiting the building. Now, we all know now what happened. Tragically, the 
the buildings collapsed, but my LB's mother had enough sense to know that it wasn't about impressing people, that it wasn't about uh, preservation. It was about making sure that you did and you stayed faithful, that when you recall what the Lord brought you through before, you ain't going to make no mistakes nowhere else. And there were people, there are people to this day who were still grateful for her saving their life. They said, if I didn't follow you, I wouldn't be here today. So I'm grateful that you had the good sense to know what was happening. All I'm saying is, you got to know what kind of influencer you gonna be that you've been through before some stuff that can help you, that you can help you in the future. The other people need the testimony of what has happened in your life. But I need some people in here who can declare and say there's some lessons in my life that I've learned from. There's some lessons in my life that I've been through. There's some people in my life that I've had to deal with that have helped me in the future make some influence that I didn't have to deal with, that I didn't have to deal with, that I didn't have to deal with. I'm grateful for the influence of what the Lord has done so I could be a blessing to somebody else. Can anybody in here say I know what it is to be through a storm so I know how to walk. I know what it is to have been in a troubling situation so I know how to pray. I know what it is to be in the valley so I know how to tread lightly. I know what it is to have enemies at your feet so I know how to box. I know what it is to go through hell and high water so I learn how to swim because I've been through it. The Lord has shown me how to be an influencer. Can I get some hands of some influencers in the building? I've been through it, and I can tell you all about it. I've been through it, and I can tell you what the Lord has done. I've been through it, but my testimony is through it all, through it all. The Lord has been good. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word. I've learned to depend and I can be a better influence. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I'm not saying, I'm not saying there's not stuff you won't go through, but I'm saying how you tell people, how you demonstrate what you've been through will make all the influence in the world. You can't be or talk about being blessed in God. Come on, stand to your feet all over the church. You can't talk about being blessed in God and be as mean as a snake. That's the wrong influence. You can't talk about how the Lord delivered you through stuff that you couldn't get yourself out of. Alcoholism, drug addiction, life of crime, whatever it is, you can't talk about how the Lord delivered you and then look at somebody else like God ain't got a word for them. How? How? Are you an influence? How are you an influence? You can't talk about somebody who fell from grace. When God done saved you from your fall 50 lemon times and not know what grace and mercy looks like. So how do you influence is the question. So listen, we want to extend this invitation to you right now. And as you stand all across the church, Maybe somebody here under the sound of my voice, somebody here looking to be a part of the body and the fellowship of Christ, looking to grow and understand what God has for them. Listen, if you would do me a favor, be an influence right now. Don't, don't dissuade or deter anybody. Just be an influence right now and tell somebody, let somebody know how good God has been to you, how much God has been to a blessing. And so... We want to extend the invitation to discipleship. I invite you to be a part of the New Calvary Baptist Church. 
You can call the church at 757-627-1269. Leave a message. Somebody will get back to you and get your information. Get, go ahead on our website, newcalvarynorfolk.org. Click on Become a Member. Fill the information out and somebody will return your call. Or you can just email us at newcalvarynorfolk.org and somebody will get back to you. We love to be a church family. I'd love to be your pastor. We learn, love to see what God has in store for you. So right now we just say, is there one? Is there somebody who wants to be a part of the fellowship of the faithful? Through it all, through it all. Tell them I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in him. Hallelujah. I've learned. Come on, do me a favor, just put your hands together for worship in this place. New Calvary, were you blessed today? Hallelujah. Come on, thank God for Doc Christian. Thank God for Tony Wofford. Thank God. But big brother Sean, grateful for this choir blessing us, these deacons, these trustees, our media ministry, Lottie Daddy, and everybody, our Urshas, grateful for them, all of them who share in this place. Listen, as we prepare to depart for this place, my prayer is, my first prayer is, is that your team wins today. And if they don't win, I hope they don't lose too bad. Amen. Amen. My other prayer is, is that we ask that you would pray. I ask, we ask that you would pray for me and Lady C. We are headed on Friday to Ghana, West Africa. Two of us are headed to West Africa. So please pray for traveling mercies. Amen. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there on a 10-day excursion, learning and growing and being enriched. So please pray for us. Uh, and pray that she doesn't get lost over there because she likes to wander and stuff, so pray for her that she doesn't get lost. Finally, we ask that you just continue to pray for New Calvary Baptist Church. Continue to pray for us that as we grow and as we do what we believe God has in store for us, um, that we might be faithful, that we might not operate out of spirit of fear or anxiety, but that we would trust God even in the places where we are unsure. We ask that you would pray for each other in this moment as we prepare to depart from this place. God, we are grateful Grateful for your hand upon us. Grateful for your love that continues to keep us. Grateful, God, for your grace that follows us each and every day. And God, as we grow and as we stretch, we ask, Lord God, that your hand would be gently upon our back as you push us to the places where we need to be. So let our eyes continue to observe. Let our ears continue to hear. And let our spirits continue to be encouraged. That in all things we give you praise, honor, and glory. That when we depart from this place, we will never be away from your presence. In all things we say thank you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be grateful unto you. The Lord place God's countenance upon you so that you might have peace. Let the people of God say peace. Say peace in Jesus' name. Let the people of God who love God say amen and amen. Give somebody a greeting. Tell them you're glad to see them. This is our order of worship. Go and serve the Lord. Tony, good to see you, baby. I'm so glad. Trouble don't last long. Say weeping may endure. Keep the faith. I'm
trouble don't last no way. I'm so glad, I'm so glad. Hey, trouble don't last no way. I say, I'm so glad. Hey, trouble don't last no way. Trouble don't last our way there. Come on, come on, tell a weeping man to endure. endure. Keep the faith. Weeping way. Just keep the faith. It will be all right. Trouble don't last our way. Hey. Trouble don't last our way. Hey. Here we go. Here we go. Trouble don't last our way. Hey. 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 Trouble don't last our way. Come on. Come on, Sabrina. Here we go. Hey. There we go. No, no, no. Trouble don't last our way. Come on. One more, Sabrina. Trouble don't last. Come on, man! 